And let us check in now on where Baylor will begin their quest for a second straight Final Four appearance and what they hope will be a second national championship. The Baylor Lady Bears begin their run in Waco in the Dallas region. Well, they will take on Prairie View A&M. Baylor, of course, first in the nation in field goal defense, 32.1% of shots allowed. Also in that same region in Waco, it'll be West Virginia taking on Houston. The Mountaineers, somewhat of a curious study this season, started 16-0, but lost eight of their last 12 games. It is West Virginia and Houston also in Waco in the Dallas region. Moving on to the bottom half there, we will see Green Bay take on Arkansas, Little Rock, and of course the champs of the Horizon League, one of the hottest teams coming in. 23 straight victories coming into the tournament, second longest active streak, one of five teams in the field that has a winning streak of at least 20 games going into the tournament. The Phoenix will play. Arkansas Little Rock and here's where they were when they won the Horizon League not too long ago a gift from the Green Bay Packers and of course the Phoenix trying to keep that title of title town in Green Bay Wisconsin alive they began against Arkansas Little Rock moving on in the Dallas region it'll be Michigan State taking on Northern Iowa for Michigan State their third straight NCAA appearance and Kalisha Keene voted the conference player of the year by the coaches. Northern Iowa 27 and 5, the Missouri Valley champions. The inside outside game of Baylor, they hope, takes them back to a second straight Final Four. Now, the bottom half of the Dallas region. Let's take a look at the teams that are going to be playing there. And there you see Georgia taking on Middle Tennessee State. Middle Tennessee State in the tournament despite the death of team member Tina Stewart in that fatal stabbing accident. They are in the tournament. They will take on Andy Landers and the University of Georgia, a six seed versus an 11 seed. Moving on in the bottom half of the Dallas region. There you see Sue Semrau's Florida State Seminoles taking on Sanford. Sanford making their first ever NCAA appearance. Florida State always known for their defense. And of course, this year they were the victims for UConn, 89th straight win. And also helping out Sue Semrau, the fact that she has a senior point guard in Courtney Ward. Ward she has to feel good about that come tournament time. All right, so there's the matchup there, the 314 Florida State and Sanford staying in the bottom half of the Dallas region. Rutgers in the ninth straight NCAA appearance, their 22nd overall taking on Louisiana Tech. Congratulations to the Lady Texers, their thousandth win in program history this year. Only Tennessee, the only other program to reach that level, the 7-10 matchup. That game played in Shreveport. And at the bottom of the bracket, the two seed in Dallas is Texas A&M. They have played Baylor three times. Uh, they have lost to Baylor three times. They get McNeese State, the Southland champs, in the 215 matchup. But Texas A&M and Baylor in the same region here in Dallas. And Kara, when we saw the graphic and we saw the regionals and the brackets, we all said the same thing. Wow, four times now it's a possibility Baylor and Texas A&M may go at it. You know, you look at this, and in my opinion, Texas A&M is the strongest two seed. I mean, they're a team that was fighting probably for a one seed all the way up until the last few games of the year. You look at this and you say, what in the world? I mean, Baylor and Texas A&M could potentially play for the fourth time. What this is is the geographic principles and procedures of the NCAA Tournament Committee, the fact that they place teams in their closest region, not in an S-curve. And so this is why this has happened. I am not particularly a fan of it, Carolyn, but the committee is going along with their guidelines and placing AM there in the Dallas region. Gary Blair can't be too upset with it, and the reason being is they've already played Baylor three times. So he doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. Each time that they've played Baylor, they've played them very close. So he can go back and look at his game plan. For the majority of those games, he has played Baylor very well. Now what he has to do is go look in the last minute, two minutes of the ball games, those crucial mistakes, and can he close it out and possibly get themselves to a Final Four? And of course, that third meeting was in the Big 12 tournament, and after that loss to Baylor, Gary Blair said, we plan on playing them a fourth time and plan on getting to the Final Four. It's as if Gary Blair knew exactly what the committee was thinking about. For more on this region, we check in with Doris Burke and Rebecca Lobo.
Trey, in each of the four brackets tonight, we are going to take a look at two teams from each. One that we believe can make a run and one that might want to tread carefully. Upset alert, so to speak. If you look at the Dallas region, I think one of the most intriguing teams in the tournament, the Green Bay Phoenix. So much to like about Matt Boland's team. I don't know where to begin. Let's start on the offensive end of the floor where they run a motion offense. The philosophy, the best player is the open player. Four different players with at least 80 assists. Tough to prepare for. Now a team I have going to the final four, Baylor. But this will not be an easy region for this team. Green Bay with their disciplined offense and value of pressuring the basketball could be a tough matchup. They also might have to face Texas A&M for the fourth time. The key in that one, the two Sydneys, Carter and Colson. Could they make shots for Gary Blair's team? For more on the Dallas region, let's send it over to B. And Doris, for more on Texas A&M, when you look at Texas A&M, the first name that comes to mind is Danielle Adams, the leading scorer in the Big 12 this year. But the X factor for me is Tyra White. She was outstanding in their second game against Baylor. She can create her own shot, 49% from the floor, 40% from threes. She gets to the basket. She's a great rebounding guard, averages over five rebounds a game. In Trey, for Texas A&M and Tyra White to get to their first Final Four, they would most likely have to go through Baylor.